today's message, Faith Over Fear, change the picture. I want to talk a little bit more about how to change fear. In other words, fear yaks at you, right? Come on now, be honest. Fear speaks. It has a voice, has a picture. And uh, quite frankly, most Americans, I guess probably most of the world, gets a, a pretty heavy dose of fear every day. And it's just living here. But of course, media is all based on fear, right? Tragedy, everything happens, everything blows up, something's wrong, you know? And so if you feed on that all your life, you're going to just keep puzzled, you know, being puzzled why you have these results that you don't like because you've programmed yourself to believe in fear. Now, prescription drugs for fear are up, new records. And I always say, if you don't deal with fear, it will deal with you. You're talking to someone that's lived through that nine years, panic attacks, antidepressants, years ago, of course, all kinds of dysfunction. I got the T-shirt, wish I never did. I don't want you to have it. So this is, a, this is an important series. You need to take notes. You got your pencil ready, your pen ready. You got your seat belts buckled. <clears throat> Psalms 23, verse 4, one of our starting scriptures. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear what? In your dictionary, what does the word no mean? None. You are to fear how much? Fear. No evil. Why? You got to answer the question, why? What, the, what does it say next? Because God's with you. You have no need to fear because God is with you, right? Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now the staff... Leads a shepherd leads with the staff, but the rod can get get away from that cliff, correct you a little bit, keep you going the right way. You can trust God to get you down life's road with where you're supposed to head to, protect you, take care of you. And because you can trust Him with not only the staff and the rod, you'll fear no evil because He's with you. He'll make sure you get the job done correctly and free from danger. Amen. That's what it says. Now, in the Hebrew, out of Psalms there, the word shadow of death literally means darkness. But not just darkness, we're talking about deep darkness. That's what it literally is talking about. It also means to stress extreme danger in a place of the dead. You grew up in the place of the stench of things dying, disappointments, bad things happening to people all around you, things happening in life. Things you see on TV, things you see in the media, things happening. And uh, you grew up in that valley of the shadow of death, the, the shadow of fear. You grew up with that. You immediately began to put up walls and protections. If I can just get enough money, I'll be protected. If I can just get through this stressful event, I'll be okay. I got to, you know, you began to, to kind of design your life to avoid fear, protect yourself from fear. Well, no more. Because he's with you, you have no fear, right? Fear is not part of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 4, 16 is your answer. It says, the people who were sitting in darkness have seen or saw a great light. And those who were sitting in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has dawned. Light always wins over darkness, friend. Always, 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 always. You've got to remember that light always wins over darkness. And you are not of the kingdom of darkness. You're of the kingdom of light. God always wins. You always win. You've got to think that way because if you program yourself for failure, you're going to fail, not knowing who you are. Those sitting in darkness. You know, if you're in complete, absolute, deep darkness, what would you do? Sit down. Nothing would happen in your life. You would stop moving forward. You would just sit. Do you know that most people live in that survival state? They, they've given up their dreams because they, the fear of it's too great to even anticipate trying. They're afraid to hope because they don't want to be disappointed. You ever heard of that? Afraid to hope because you're afraid to be disappointed? Well, you might as well start just understanding that you're sitting in darkness because you're not designed to sit still. You're designed to enjoy life. And it's, I mean, as far as life goes, God's people should be the fullest of life, full of vision of anybody on the earth, right? Well, we need to understand how fear works. The people sitting in darkness saw a great light. When light was there, they could see. They had vision returned. Now, speaking of light, I need a show of hands. How many people interceded and fasted this week that the lights would be on in church? I want to see a show of hands. How many were concerned, fearful, that when they got here, the lights would not be on, and you took it upon yourself to fast and pray that when you got here, the lights would be on? I see a show of hands. Well, thanks a lot. (laughs) 
Well, here's the question. Why didn't you? Because you had absolute confidence that these lights would be on, right? Now, let's think about that. Let's think about that. Because back in history, they didn't have lights. And if you would have shown them these lights a thousand years ago, they would have been completely shocked, right? So why aren't you shocked every day you come in here? Because you have renewed your mind to lights, the laws of electricity. You understand the law never changes. It'll work here. It works in Africa. It works in the North Pole. Wherever there's electricity, you can have lights, right? Come on, help me out. You all enjoy lights every day. You don't even think about it. Well, see, the kingdom is a kingdom of laws. I remember sitting next to a guy in a plane last year. It's crazy. I mean, I'm a pilot, so this story is kind of strange to me. This guy was literally digging his claws into the seat. He was sweating. He was nervous. He was, I think, he was actually shaking. And I was sitting next to him, and I asked him what the problem was. He says, this is the first time I've ever been on a plane. Okay, so what's the problem? <laughs> Fear overtook him. Why? Because, see, in his life, he had experienced more gravity than he had plane. In other words, he knew that at 30,000 feet in his world, gravity says, uh-uh, uh-uh, you're going down, right? But see, as a pilot, I've experienced that law of lift over and over and over and over. On a weekly basis, I fly. As a pilot, I also fly. So I have experienced the law of lift multiple times. I have renewed my mind to how it operates. I'm no longer shocked. I anticipate and am totally confident it will hold me at 30,000 feet. But this is his first time. See, all he saw, all he knew was the law of gravity. He had not experienced the law of lift, so he reacted from his experience and anticipated what the law he understood would produce, which produced fear that he would then fall. Is that making sense to you? But see, you need to understand Romans chapter 8, verse 2. It says that through Christ, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. Notice both kingdoms have laws. Through Christ, the law of the spirit of what? Say it again. Life, not death, not shadow of death. Life, the law of life, the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and the shadow of death or fear. So if you want to be free from fear, friend, you've got to change your understanding of the laws. Like that guy on the plane that all he knew was the law of gravity. He had not studied. He had not flown. He had not renewed his mind to the law of lift where he was confident. He was nervous and afraid, which I was looking at him like, dude, I mean, come on now. It's going to be all right. You know, it's going to be okay. This thing's going to work. It's a law. It works every single time, right? Because I'd renewed my mind to it. The law of the spirit of life. A law implies there's function and process to the law. You can learn the law. When Drenda and I were in serious financial messes and dysfunction, and I was on antidepressants, and I had given up hope, it was the law that God taught me, the law of the spirit of life. He began to teach me about the other kingdom, the laws of his kingdom. As I began to meditate on his laws, I began to grow more confident in those laws, and fear subsided. I could sit back in that plane and enjoy the view. I wasn't nervous about it falling out of the sky. Life was no longer a journey of terror. It was now a journey of opportunity. I began to see that the same law that I was previously afraid of, this law of lift, could actually take me places I could never have gone before. And so it is in the kingdom of God. As you learn the kingdom of God and who you are in Christ and who God is and the law as it operates, all of a sudden a whole new world opens up to you. You're no longer sitting in darkness trying to survive one more week. Your vision now sees there's a whole life out there. We call it the good life here at Faith Life. God designed you to enjoy the good life, to have potential. See, your mind has been renewed to the law of the kingdom. You have a choice to make. You need to understand how the kingdom operates, how the laws operate, because they never change. They work the same for anyone. See, a lot of Christians think that, well, if someone just prays hard enough and long enough, then God does something. Oh, no, he did something 2,000 years ago. See, he's already given you the kingdom. 
Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.